everybody and welcome to the video today. I am going to be flipping through this zoology book, but I first wanted to say thank you for all of the lovely comments on my last video and to all of my loyal subscribers. I might explain one day where I went for five years. I, it's a bit interesting, however I wanted to put in some quality videos first. So thank you for joining me today. You might also notice that I have press on nails and I thought might enhance the ASMR experience, but if for some reason it takes away from the learning and you dislike it, let me know. Uh, you might also notice that this book is a little different than the previous zoology book I used to use, which was actually a textbook, and it used um, taxonomic order to break things down. Uh, taxonomic order is basically kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. So it broke each phylum down in a way that I really, really liked. Uh, it was an te actual textbook, and I sold all, got rid of all of my textbooks. Uh, which is very unfortunate. I am trying to get some back. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, we've got this book, which looks at zoology or the study of animals. And it uses something called cladistics, which um, takes a look at like evolutionary history and common uh, traits of different animals and puts them in groups that way. Now taxonomic order actually does use that uh, to group some of their um, taxonomic cate categories or categorization also. They're kind of like mutually exclusive or whatnot. Okay, so we've got some fun pages. these pretty flamingos. I'm not gonna read that, it's very long. <laughs> All right, so the animal kingdom is one of five kingdoms of living things. A living thing is something that can respire, move, um, reproduce, and grow independent of its environment. So there are five kingdoms of living things. I wrote them down for you. Very rudimentary drawing here. Um, we have the single-celled bacteria and protists, or protozoans, or protista. We've got plants, fungus, and animals that are multi-celled, um, eukaryotic. And so today we are focusing on animals, okay? The definition of an animal is a living organism that is made of many cells, usually collaborate to form tissues and organs and ingests organic matter such as plants or other animals for nutrition or energy. You might notice uh, that viruses are not listed as a living kingdom because technically viruses do not fulfill the definition of being alive. They are not able to grow or reproduce independently. They are just a strain of DNA that hijack our cellular equipment to reproduce. Um, so without us and or the cells of other animals, they cannot reproduce. So um, that could be a video for another time. Now we're gonna look at uh, the most simple animal, which is the sponge. Uh, so something is considered simple when it has a really low level of um, organization of tissues and organ systems and nerve structures. So when scientists are looking at um, classifying animals as um, complex or simple and actually just categorizing them into groups at all, they look at um, things like symmetry 
and the level of organization, seal and development, which is your digestive tract, and then like embryonic germ layers and segmentation of the body. So sponges are very simple. They have um, no seal and development and they have um, very low organization of tissue. Uh, they use flagella for feeding, which um, actually it's believed they came from co came from coenoflagellates, which is like a, a protist here. Uh, and so that's basically what the blurb is about. And then this is a uh, crinoid, which is actually an echinoderm, but it is an animal. Very lovely. So now we're going to touch on evolution because evolutionary history is a key for um, categorizing the groups in um, a cladogram. Uh, so each of these is a clade and they have shared like common ancestors. So technically modern birds um, came from Archaeopteryx, which is an a creature that was between a dinosaur and a bird and I actually have a video on that if you're interested. Uh, and then we have um, the predecessor, the, the main, or the main ancestor, sorry, the main ancestor is the pteropod here. So this just shows the different branches of evolutionary history. which evolution, how animals today uh, have descended from different animals in the past by a process of evolution. No single individual evolves, rather entire populations accumulate differences over many generations. Mutation, random replication errors in the genetic material is the source of inherited variation. Here's another cladogram that looks at the animal kingdom and we have the very rudimentary simple sponges all the way up to chordates which include us and um, chordates are basically all vertebrates um, and then two other groups called lancelots and sea squirts. Here's a sea squirt. And a chordate basically just has a central nervous system and a coelomate or a digestive sac. And then um, vertebrates have an actual uh, vertebrate column, like we do, um, as well as uh, fish and birds and reptiles and amphibians uh, and fish. So um, actually, most of the other animals are invertebrates. And um, I look here at the evolutionary history and let's see what this says. Traditionally, animals were divided into invertebrates without backbones and vertebrates with backbones, but this neglects the true pattern of their evolutionary relationships. Most animals lack backbones and a cladogram, our family tree shows that all vertebrates make up just a subgroup of the chordates. So, there you are. Now, there are phylums of invertebrates if you're looking at like taxonomic order um, are going to be Porifera, which is your sponges, Nigeria, which is like your jellyfish, um, uh, and coral reefs, and their corals, uh, Tinophora, which are jellyfish um, of a specific kind, like comb jellies, Platyhelminthes, which are your type of worms, like flatworms, Nematoda, which is um, nematode worms. Uh, Analita, which is uh, like earthworms, and then we've got some um, more complex 
invertebrate phylums that include arthropoda and um, mollusks and echinoderms. So beetles are part of, um, actually let's look here. Here's an arthropod, a mollusk, a sponge, and then that's technically a chordate. It's a sea squirt. Beetle diversity. Uh, beetles are in phylum arthropoda and in order insecta. And this says, despite the extraordinary range of animal life in the sea and on land, one quarter of all described species belongs to a single group of insects, beetles. Uh, they are built on a common theme. They all have hardened wing cases and chewing mouth parts. They have diversified into a multitude of forms. And then these talk about how, how diverse their habitat is. Um, like they live everywhere except for in the ocean. Um, the different family groups, there are 200 beetle families and their behaviors. Um, they're highly adaptive and versatile. So you have um, grove beetles, ground beetles, leaf beetles, desert habitat beetles, moorland habitat, rainforest, dung rollers, leaf and root eater, wood borer beetles, um, weevils, which uh, I think they used to have like a problem with weevils getting into the flower here in like the 1920s or something like that. That probably sounds very ignorant of me, I apologies. Um, freshwater pond beetles and predator beetles. They are actually fascinating to me. Um, I think beetles are beautiful. I really like this one here, the green, um, green devil dung beetle. But they're all really, really cool. So now we are looking at vertebrates. Um, so here is a page on fish and a cladogram for fish. And it basically shows uh, uh, the different clades here. Fish don't actually form a clade. Different types of fish form clades, but fish in general had a lot of different branches of evolution, including the sharks and rays, which shows that the bone was replaced by cartilage. That's your um, cartilaginous fish. And then you have your bony fish, and then they lost limbs. These are your different types of uh, amphibians. And then we go into amniotes, which talk about, um, I believe that amniotes include um, reptiles, birds, and mammals. It has to do with like their embryo development. So the first backboned animals were fish, and around half of today, 69,000 or so vertebrate species have retained the fish body form. The archetypical fish has a hydrodynamic shape that aids movement in water, scaly skin, fins that stabilize and control movements, and gills that absorb oxygen. But many forms have deviated from this plant. Now, we are to the reptiles and birds. So here's a cladogram that shows the different reptiles. Um, and then there was like um, this um, direct lineage between reptiles and birds. So like fish reptiles represent a grade of animal, not a clade. Um, they don't all have one common ancestor. They broke off into many branches. So, um, but mammals are a clade and birds are a clade because they broke off from one specific branch of reptiles. Um, so uh, mammals and birds are considered clades on their own. So that's what this is showing. Um, skull openings lost, body became shelled scaly skin, and then we go down to 
teeth and sockets, which led to feathers, hollow bones, and warm blood. Um, and then the, the mammals came from a different set of reptiles. Reptiles represent a major shift in body plan as vertebrates became better adapted for life out of water. Compared with their amphibian ancestors, reptiles acquired a harder scaly skin that resisted drying out and eggs that can develop on land. Giant reptiles in the form of dinosaurs dominated the world for 150 million years, and the descendants of dinosaurs, the birds, Day match living reptiles in number of species. So here's a bird. This is a very pretty bird here. And we're going into mammals. Here is a baboon, a zebra, and a cladogram showing how the reptiles branched into specific clades of mammals. Uh, your monotremes, your like the platypus, your marsupials, and then your placental mammals, which most mammals are placental mammals. Like birds and living amphibians, but unlike reptiles and fish, mammals constitute a clade natural group containing all the descendants of one common ancestor, um, one common reptile, and so mammals actually uh, showed up around the time of dinosaurs. So they, uh, <laughs> they evolved separately from, uh, from birds, uh, from, from, a, from a group of dinosaurs around the time, around the same time. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so mammals descended from a group of reptiles that flourished before the time of dinosaurs. Oh. So it was before, okay. But during this time remained small and shrew-like. They did first day they were able to have this huge um, explosion after the dinosaurs died out um, mammals really really started to diversify and this is totally random page on prehistoric paintings uh, showing uh, the importance of animals to our prehistoric cavemen um, and civilizations as they as humans formed civilizations the importance of agriculture and um, animals livestock etc and I think we're done for today um, I might be a little rusty <laughs> I have not done a textbook video in a very long time so I hope that this was somewhat enjoyable while also being informative and relaxing and all of the things that you're looking for in an ASMR experience. <laughs>